travelers and welcome to virtual stars podcast all my loyal listeners thank you for your continued support and remember click subscribe button everybody it's an amazing episode because jeff parker boards the mothership you know him as the writer of negaduck now come on board as we go traversing the stars hello mr parker thank you so much for coming to versus stars podcast thank you for having me on it's totally my pleasure i look forward to talking about negaduck with you so I would start with a question of inspiration. So what inspired your love for comics and who are your earliest influences? Well, in, in a way that uh, kind of connects to Negaduck, but a roundabout way, Carl Barks is like uh, huge uh, in me from as a little kid. And now I can still read his stuff and be exactly as entertained as I was then. Um, and in my mind, you know, he's the key, he's the godfather of all ducks. In, in cartoons and comics. Um, but also, let's see, you're talking about early stuff, right? Sure. My first, uh, I, I think my first uh, love uh, in cartoons was Popeye. I, as a kid, like I, I based this because like there's a picture of me as a toddler with a little Popeye soup my mom made for me. And I had a little Popeye sippy cup and everything so it's like so i know i must have just said popeye non-stop um and it's great because uh, elsie seeger the creator of popeye i still think is one of the greatest cartoonists weirdly enough who's right there at the beginning and in my mind if you go back and read it he's still uh (laughs) as good as anybody working you know it's just hilarious work now do you actually like spinach or do you just like the character i like spinach okay (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not some giant spinach freak about it, but I like it. It doesn't give me the, the, the power, you know, that Popeye. Well, the great thing about if you read the original strips, Popeye didn't even really eat spinach. It, that was added later. Really? Uh, and it may have been done in a cartoon and then they put it back in the comics. Uh, or I'm trying to remember the actual origin of how that happened. No, Popeye's whole power was simply that he was a sailor so he was just incredibly tough (laughs) (laughs) so what was the name of the one who then loves was it the uh, cheeseburgers wimpy wimpy yes (laughs) so yeah Yeah. i I do remember it from back in the day but i remember it i think more from um robin williams uh movie than i do from the cartoon i love i love the the robert altman 1980 popeye movie i love it um like that was written uh the screenplay was written by jules pfeiffer and uh, Shelley Duvall played Olive. It's just, I love the cast of that. And uh, I briefly, when I lived in Los Angeles, uh, I lived down in Hermosa Beach. And next door to me was the actor Donald Moffat. And he often played the president and things like that in movies over the years. And the only time I ever talked to him about his work, because I didn't want to be that guy, um, I had to ask him about being in Popeye because he's the tax collector in Popeye. And, uh, and he, he, he got excited. He said, Oh, you should, we were in Malta and they built this whole set that was like two blocks, which actually is still there because it's called Popeye village and they made an attraction out of it. And you can still go to it. If you ever go to the Malta comic-con, hmm. uh, there's just a comic-con almost everywhere in there. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm a big fan of the movie and uh oh yeah the wimpy's one of the all-time great comics characters too because he is the worst possible friend anybody could ever have like he will always sell popeye down the river like and just like sell him out non-stop just like he does in the movie um they got that right but popeye always just tolerates it like yeah he's my friend what am i gonna do <laughs> I mean, do you think Popeye has stayed as relevant as, as he deserves to be, considering uh, modern audiences? Uh, well, he certainly stuck around a lot longer than you would think. I mean, uh, you know, something like that came out around roughly the same time, like Superman, you know, uh, he's the kind of wish fulfillment that still sticks around because you, you get it you're like everybody like, oh, I wish I could just make the unfair world fair with my... Mm amazing strength and heat vision 
Uh, of course, the heat vision automatically makes you think I'm going to do some bad stuff here. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think about that. That's a good question. Off the drop of a hat you just came up with. the uh, You know, he would have done better. And actually, I think they are going to do it now. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Samurai Jack Tartakovsky uh, was going to do a Popeye movie. And then uh, Sony said no to it and instead ended up doing the movie everybody makes fun of, the Emoji movie. <laughs> it's like, wow, what a trade that was. <laughs> well, we almost got Gendy doing a, a Popeye movie. Again, he had done made this little trailer himself. It looked amazing. But I think actually that's back on. So we'll see. Who, who knows? Uh, everything doesn't get to last forever, but... Some things like, you know, Batman, Superman, all uh, have weird staying power because I guess because some some comics characters just feel more like myths mm. is prop my guess. You know, they they something weirdly intuitive about them. Like Batman, I don't know why it's intuitive that someone dressed as a bat goes out and beats up uh, crazy people. But, uh, you know, but it is. <laughs> I think in in that case, I'll, you know, another thing that really works uh, for animation and comics characters sticking around is if people like to draw them. Mm. I feel like that's been a big thing behind Hellboy. I think people just like drawing that character, mm. you know, even though everybody agrees Mignola's version is the right one. But, you know, it's still every artist I know has drawn him several times. <laughs> well, I mean, I agree about the um, Superman Batman thing as far as... Um... You know, they, they're great archetypes. I mean, wish fulfillment. You do want to wish you had the money to be Batman. And I guess if you were too lazy to put the work in to be Batman, you become Superman. <laughs> right? <laughs> or, or you're just a rich guy. Either way, you got it made. Right, right. <laughs> well, I, I'm going, like I said, we're going to Darkwing Duck. I mean, Darkwing Duck basically is a, a satire of Superman. I mean, a Batman, I mean. Batman, yeah. And and I remember watching it when, when I was a kid. And I must have when I was a kid, I'd really love Darkwing Duck. Um, mm -hmm. When I say I was a kid, I think I was older than a kid should be considered, but still, I enjoyed Darkwing Duck. I think I was like, uh, what was it, 1993 maybe it came out, 94? Yeah. So I was 13 or 14, which isn't quite a kid, but I guess is still young enough to enjoy cartoons. How about you? Were you watching um, Darkwing Duck um, as a kid? I, I watched it some just because I was such an animation fiend, even though I'm like 10 years older than you. So it's like, you know... <laughs> um, and yeah, if you went by, hey, you shouldn't be watching that because you're that. And it's like, eh, if it's good, I'm watching it. You know, that, that's all that really mattered. Or if it's on a time that I can wake up by. That was probably more important to whether I got to see anything at that time or not. Um, but no, it was funny. It, it actually seemed to uh, more parody the an Batman, the animated series more than anything, mm. uh, you know, because they kind of did a lot of in jokes towards that and you know and except batman doesn't talk about himself as much as darkwing duck does you know the terror that flaps in the night and all that but uh right. <clears throat> um and the weird thing is it, as you'll notice i'm actually right now working on the second arc of uh the negaduck book and it's like i haven't actually written a he appears in one panel. <laughs> Still haven't really actually written Darkwing in the thing because I'm trying to make an exercise. Of, Let's just see how much mileage we can get out of Negaduck. <laughs> uh, um, you know, it's still really Darkwing, uh, except his coat is yellow and uh, <laughs> he's not as nice. But, you know, it's 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 kind of fun and no kid sidekicks or whatever. Well, like I said, speaking of Negaduck, well, once again, it's being published by Dynamite Entertainment. Um, yeah, they've, how, they've gotten a whole bunch of great licenses now. Yeah, so it's, it's weird to think that they have Darkman Duck right now. They're doing Gargoyles. All this is owned by Disney, which who owns Marvel, but somehow are so giving it over to Dynamite for whatever reason. It, I, yeah, try to figure that out. I I, I never will. So, but that's I mean, just the way comics industry works, I guess. See, my guess is if it proves too successful, Disney would just take it back, <laughs> like they did. Uh, you know, be like, hey, it's ours now. Uh, but who knows? I mean. Um, I do. I, I'm enjoying the Darkman Duck series. I'm enjoying Mega Duck. Um, I guess there's another one coming out too called Justice Duck. I mean, it's becoming a whole uni unified universe uh -huh. of books. So, because it is a unified universe, are 
the author, you guys talking to each other, the writers of all three books, and determining if there's going to be some coherence? I'm just relying on the editor, Nate Cosby, to tell me if I'm doing something wrong or whatever. You know, I, and as far as I'm concerned, even the cartoon itself didn't stick to its own things that it would establish, you know, like Negaduck's origin himself changed during the course of the show. You know, it's like, so they played fast and loose with that. You know, I know they have the blessing of Tad Stones. Um, and he messaged me the other day on blue sky and said, and said he was ordering the books. I was like, what? I'll just make them send it to you. What are you doing? It's like, no, I just want to, I want to read them on a Kindle. So, <laughs> so I'm like, good. Now I got to sit around sweating to see if Tad liked my story. You know, it was like, <laughs> I hope he did. Well, he seems like a common, I mean, I got to interview him. He seems like a pretty chill guy. I think, um, he, I, oh yeah. He's such a good guy. And, and I guess, um, they know they're working on a Darkwing Duck TV series, is my understanding. Um, like, like sort of um, not quite the one from like DuckTales came back, but I think a sort of. Um, They'll probably, um, I would assume they would do like DuckTales, do a little freshen up the designs and stuff. Like, I love the new DuckTales uh, work. I think this stuff's great. So, have you heard, is there any impact on that? I mean, are you hearing anything about the potential Darkwing Duck series that is coming down? the pipeline to what they're asking for you to do or not do? No, no one has. Uh, I think they try to make sure that no one gets ahead of themselves or gives away fun secrets like that, you know, that are held to be released at a certain time. So no, uh, I'm not lying to you either. They, they have not told me anything about it. Well, the, the other thing too about Darkwing Duck is that when you think about the original series, it, like I said, you mentioned before, it doesn't keep its own continuity straight. It's kind of um, sort of like um, like like Star um, like the original Star Trek show where each episode is just an episode. They don't really seem to interact with each other very much, and there's no usually reference to a prior episode. So when you're thinking about doing right. Negaduck, are you thinking about it as long continuing continuity, or do you think about it like Darkwing Duck, where continuity doesn't really matter and it's just issue to issue, things just happen. There's not going to be really kind of the latter. I am thinking about it where. I'm I'm probably never going to contradict anything that I did, uh, but I'm also not super worried about it. Um, I feel like the one thing that really messes up a lot of properties is when people get too obsessed with continuity mm. or that dreaded term canon. You know, it's like, guys, quit worrying about this. You're, you're, you're considering things in canon where the creators often like, can't remember if you asked them like what they had in there. Cause they, it wasn't that, that wasn't the important thing to them. You know, hmm. if something's good enough, it, yeah, it tends to come back. Uh, but, but no, uh, people will get hung up on that sort of thing. And like, no, he never said this before. It's like, well, he, he's saying it now, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird thing that people get obsessed over. Um, I don't think I ever got obsessed over it. I hope I didn't. Uh, if I did, I'm sorry to anybody I bothered with that. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, I, I think it's better to not, you know, you don't have to treat it like a clean slate every time. Like, it's not like Darkwing is surprised every time he meets Negaduck, like, who are you? You know, and has to be reintroduced all over. But they don't have to refer in detail back to past fights or anything like that, you know. Now, an interesting challenge um, that you have writing Negaduck is that it's, it can't be easy writing a protagonist that's a villain. Um, and in the history of comic books, there hasn't been many comic books where the main character is, is a bad guy. I think Joker had a few issues here and there, and there have been a few others like that, but it's, it's rare. So, I, I, did, I did a pretty long run on Thunderbolts, so if, if that counts for anything, you know, it's like there, there are books uh, like that in Suicide Squad that uh, definitely count as the bad guy get that yeah the joker book that was that was kind of interesting you know it's like it didn't work at all <laughs> <laughs> and i don't know how you would try to sustain something like that you, typically it seems like uh publishers have a easier time when the character's more like a rogue where they're sort of a villain not quite a hero but they're also not so bad 
Um, and the way I typically dealt with that, like when I wrote Thunderbolts, uh, was, you know, they just simply often ran into uh, threats that were much worse than they were. So by comparison, they were heroic, even if they themselves were were not heroes or, or n- didn't want to be. Right. But with Negaduck, he many ways in the Darkwing universe, he is the worst of the worst. Yeah. Darkwing. So so how do you deal with that? What what can you make worse than Negaduck in the Darkwing Duck universe? Uh, you just keep throwing problems at him and drive him nuts. That that's what I've found so far that makes it fun. Uh, where things don't go according to his plan. Because, I mean, yeah, he's the baddest of the bad, except he hasn't actually taken over the planet. He routinely gets beat by a duck who looks like him. <laughs> um, you know, so yeah, it, we we try to play up some of those contradictions and, and some of the obvious things. Plus, it's just fun to have. The, the thing that you have to focus on is the fact that He's this self-obsessed character, and that kind of makes him fun to just talk uh, or interact with anybody else because, you know, he's not you don't have to worry about being nice or like are doing the right thing, because, of course, he's not going to do the right thing. He's, he's always going to kind of screw it up or whatever or, or do it on purpose. Um, and that's just incredibly fun to write. Uh, villains can be fun to write that way. It's It's always harder, like when you have to write. Uh, a very good squeaky clean character it's not tough or anything but you know you can't have them uh let's see i don't know you you gotta watch because they represent so much no one expects negaduck to (laughs) to not insult everybody so you might as well have him do it so as far as we're running his story arc he does have to lose probably like every issue or LLC, you know, dominates everything. So it's a tough to write a story where your character does have to kind of be defeated every um, story arc. Story arc. No, and that's not really what's happening in this first story. Uh, the story is about he's he's frustrated uh, in issue one because he's just broke out of prison. Uh, he's ready to go on a big crime spree. And everything he's he's kind of behind because he's been in been in jail for so long. And like everything he tries to get going, somebody, one of the other villains is already working some version of it. And he can't stand his ego can't take like, oh, I would just do the same thing. But then he overhears about a plan that uh, if you remember the villain Taurus Bulba mm-hmm. uh, and his gang are into. And then he thinks that's a really good plan. <laughs> you know, so he finally like actually gets a little objective about it and like, Ooh, that is a good plan. And then realizes it doesn't matter. I didn't come up with it. If I steal it, then I'm being a bad guy who's stealing a plan and then doing it, you know? So it's like, this is really in character. And, and so that's what he does. And uh, really he doesn't run up against any superheroes or anything to fight. You can actually have the, it, I'm not going to get ahead of myself and say what the next arc is about, but you can actually do quite a number of adventures that really don't have him running up against any good guys at all. Uh, there's, it's a big world and you can expand it. We go, we go all over the globe and in, in a lot of these stories too. So I kind of like doing that. I like seeing like Negaduck, not in St. Canard, somewhere else doing something, which is why he doesn't really cross paths in our stories with Darkwing, because he just starts kind of, you know, uh, menacing the rest of the world. So uh, when you think about Negaduck, in the cartoon, original cartoon, his basic character characteristic is that he's a bad guy. He's evil. Um, as, as you're writing him now, how... Are you developing other aspects of his character? Which ones are more interesting to explore now that you get to focus just on him? Huh. Yeah, I was what what I think I'm going for. <laughs> we'll see. I'll, I'll actually analyze it all and read it after I do it. And like, oh, here's what I actually was doing. But uh, what, what I'm going for is like, yeah, w- what exactly makes him him? Um, how is he defined when he's not defined in terms of uh, Darkwing, you know, 
And uh, is like, is he his own guy? Is or is he really just uh, the negative of Darkwing? And I don't think so. I, I think he's he is his own duck. Um, interesting. This is the same kind of thing uh, with the Dynamite books. I've done uh, some stories of, about James Bond set in World War II, where he's a young man, and it follows the timeline of the novels, which is why like. Bond is like in high school age and getting into World War II, lying about his age. Um, and that was kind of interesting because it was the same thing. I'm trying to figure out what makes him James Bond before he's running around asking for martinis that are shaken and throwing his hat on a thing and carrying the certain Beretta gun and all that. What you know, and ultimately what I arrived at there was he just won't stop is his thing is like, you know, it like he, he doesn't know everything uh, about being a spy or any of the other things in the world, but he d also just ha is more tenacious than anybody else who comes along in the stories. Uh, Negaduck. Um, and I'm kind of working that sort of thing out now. Like he's, he's resourceful, uh, but he almost always has to like, let get his ego out of the way before he can actually get anything done. Like he's his own, he's also his own worst enemy. Um, you know, he, he really thinks about how good he is. <laughs> and, and so he's not, not necessarily considering all the things he's up against because he's too busy relying on his own supremacy there <laughs> as, as a villain. Um, but uh, the important thing, of course, is not just the character. It, the important thing is he's also got to be funny. Um, and, uh, you know, we have him run into characters like uh, Darkwing's girlfriend, Morgan Lacaber, um, Morgana Cobber, sorry, messed it up. Um, so, and he tries to pull off a, 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 a disguise by saying that he's Darkwing and showing up she sees right through it right away because he doesn't know how to act like Darkwing. Uh, you know, he still comes up and says some dumb thing he thinks Darkwing would say, and she sees through it immediately. Uh, and it's, it's fun to see uh, characters fail in that way. Cause it's, cause it comes from character. You know, it's not just, it's not just a joke you could have put on anybody. It's, it's particular to them. That to me is the fun about, trying to nail a character down it's interesting that you mentioned um morgana macabre um so in the second episode uh, second issue she um she agrees as long as dark is not involved she's willing to help negaduck so as long as there's no dark duck she's willing to help negaduck in his evil plot yeah because she, she was a villain originally so that's kind of because like i said she's dark duck's girlfriend so what does that say about her personality that she's willing to do evil as long as her boyfriend isn't involved? That's still kind of evil in its own way, isn't it? Well, it's not even evil, really, because the plan itself, uh, you know, they're they're going off looking for this King Midas glove. They're not. It's not actually stealing or anything. Uh, it, well, he did steal from another gangster, but, you know, it's it's easy to see why she wouldn't care about that. And uh, if she even knew about it and, uh, you know, she she kind of feels that Catwoman role where it's like, oh, you you expect her to be very loyal to Batman. But also she might take some jewelry if there's some around, you know, uh, actually, I don't think I think they nicened her up quite a bit where, you know, but I but it, she's she's also she's got to keep a little bit of her villainous edge to make her interesting. So I tried to do that without having her actually do anything, uh, you know, dark or bad. Uh, her trade, if, if you read, you read the issue, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, remember what her trade off is. Now, I'll help you, but you've got to pose uh, so I can take your measurements because I'm trying to make some clothes. <laughs> since you happen to be exactly like my boyfriend, you know, I, I this is you're the perfect mannequin dummy uh, for this. So he's standing there getting a little tape measure uh, wrapped around him and everything, which I enjoyed, but uh, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to keep everybody within there. I'm not going to try to like 
do anything that would go against the show. You know, mm-hmm. I, she, I still, I think she feels in character. I'm looking forward to hearing what more people say, you know, in, in, in your opinion, just in the comments, um, <laughs> in, in your opinion, is her personality closer to Nega ducks then or Darkwing ducks? If you get to the core of who Morgana, uh, Morgana is. Oh, I think she's much closer to uh, Darkwing. Yeah. So if there's a Nega duck based on Darkwing duck, is there a Nega Morgana based on Nega duck? Well, you know, they went to the, the Nega duck universe, uh, the, his world, uh, And generally everybody there was good. Like, you know, Megavolt and all those characters were good guys. Um, And uh, the weird thing, if I'm remembering right, though, um, uh, Darkwing's daughter, however, Goslin, was actually, she wasn't bad. Mm. She was just sort of more girly or whatever. You know, she wasn't the tomboy thing. And that was how how her uh how she differed so again i don't know that they put a ton of time into (laughs) into getting all of that stuff like you know like they they mainly concerned themselves with what was entertaining so i'm trying to stick to that uh and i'm not going to be doing a bunch of uh we're not going to his his world you're not going to see like that again or whatever they already did that in the cartoon there's no point in me doing it you know so like as you mentioned earlier too though he's fighting Taurus Bulba or at least he steals from Taurus Bulba he's like the initial um the first issue and you get you deal a little bit with it with his henchmen so why was Taurus Bulba a great character to have Negada come up against I I I just liked him (laughs) I just I thought he was a cool villain uh, I like that he speaks in that Boris Badenoff type uh, accent, you know, where he doesn't say articles all the time is like moose and squirrel. Um, yeah. And also he was uh, presented as very competent in the cartoon. Uh, he always seemed like the the biggest threat besides Negaduck himself, you know, so it, it kind of made sense to bring him in and uh, let's see which, which issue are you on now? What, what's come out? Um, the only uh, I, issue two, one and two. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop there because I don't want to ruin anything for you, but there's some stuff that, uh, that'll that be obvious in hindsight when you get to part four. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. That is, again, like I said, uh, I think characters, people like to draw sticks. And immediately when I saw Taurus Bulba, I kind of wanted to draw a picture of him. I thought like, oh, I like this character. Hmm. So the, another character that showed up in the second issue, and I guess they're not the first on five, they're the first on four, I guess, technically, because there's only four of them. Um, at this point, I guess there's, there's no Negaduck. So the first on four shows up in the second issue. Right. How much trouble can they cause for Negaduck? Oh, uh, well, they're, they're kind of such screw-ups. Uh, they can just <laughs> cause so much trouble. Um, uh, it, yeah, it was fun. It's fun having them interact, especially in, in issue three um with him because you know he's essentially got to work with them again uh so briefly they are going to be the fearsome five but they're not going around calling themselves that it's just they're there together again um and it's kind of fun seeing how they sort of function as a non-team um yeah no they're, they're fun i you know the one that's tough to write even though he's maybe my favorite um yeah well like wait let, let me catch myself before i say something i don't want to say i'm like i'm always trying to not spoil things um the uh, liquidator now yeah this doesn't spoil anything the trick to writing liquidator he's hard like the riddler <clears throat> because you know you have to come up with riddles all the time and uh with liquidator you have to keep getting his salesman voice it's always like these these Trump these prices this won't last blah 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 you know he's always getting that sort of thing so then you think gosh they haven't really done commercials like that in a long time so like now I'm kind of having to try to remember what they sounded like because now in commercials they just try to do some silly non sequitur to make you laugh mm. and that's the advertising theory to make you remember the product 
Um, but Liquidator still talks like an old style commercial. But he, he's another one that I think is probably the most fun to draw because, again, he's half water and he's flowing around all the time. And he's a dog. Because cause they're, they're, they have they're, they're, um, basically how they are interacting. The henchmen, it sounds like the henchmen are trying to convince the Ferris and Four to get um, the airship back. But right. it also sounds like the Ferris and Four are trying to get it over on the henchmen to convince them to let them go get the airship back. So who's playing who? Yeah, they're all playing each other. That's what's fun about it. They're all bad guys. They're all, no one's being loyal. Everyone's trying to get one over on the other people. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious, yeah, you know, when you see Taurus Bulba's guy, Hammerhead, talking, that he knows what he's doing. You know, he's, uh, and remember, these other guys are mostly scientists, <laughs> you know, so they're not really criminals, like professional criminals. You know, they all came from different, like Bushroot, you know, he was a scientist. So it's not surprising that he actually doesn't make a very good criminal. Uh, he's what a scientist thinks doing crimes is and things like, and same thing with Megavolt. Um, you know, that, and that's probably, I guess, what makes Negaduck the best at it because his whole thing is being a criminal. You know, he thinks about it all the time and thinks about doing crimes. Uh, he isn't somebody who just slid into this, uh, that makes it makes me realize it probably would be interesting to show what he was like as a little kid. I'll try to get that in there somewhere. All right. <laughs> um, kind of the antagonist for Negaduck is Darkwing Dog, but will he have a new antagonist within your series? Let's see. Man, it's one of those things where I'm going to spoil stuff again. Not not in the not in the you're a superhero, I'm the bad guy since. Um, it's uh, it's more like going forward, you see more things like cool heists and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and it, actually it kind of, to think of him more in terms of Ocean's Eleven is probably right. Because um, I, I feel like he thinks of himself as a mastermind, so he tries to mastermind things. Um so the whole world is really his antagonist uh, in, in a world where he's the protagonist, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so what else can our listeners look forward to in upcoming negative uh, issues? Um, it's, uh, some cool monsters. Uh, we got to have that. And um, let's see. Well, we get some all new whole cloth new characters that were never on the cartoon. Um, but they'll be drawn and designed by uh, Chiro Kangalosi as if they were. And that to me is kind of fun. You know, I wrote the Batman 66 comic book for a long time. And uh, when we finally got to the part where I could introduce characters who had never been on the show, but everybody knew from the comics, but as if they were on the show, then that was a lot of fun for me. So, and this is kind of doing the same thing, like, all right, what if they had had another couple of seasons and they had brought in some more characters, you know, and I, I like doing that and try to try to see if it feels right and matches hmm. the whole world of the cartoon. Well, Mr. Parker, thank you so much for talking with me. It's been an absolute honor, sir. Hey, thanks. You too. <laughs> <laughs>